Necrosis, Wikipedia article audio. Necrosis is a form of cell injury which results in the premature death of cells in living tissue by autolysis. Classification Morphological patterns Other clinical classifications of necrosis Causes Pathogenesis Cellular changes Treatment in plants, necrosis is caused by factors external to the cell or tissue, such as infection, toxins, or trauma which result in the unregulated digestion of cell components. In contrast, apoptosis is a naturally occurring programmed and targeted cause of cellular death. While apoptosis often provides beneficial effects to the organism, Necrosis is almost always detrimental and can be fatal. Cellular death due to necrosis does not follow the apoptotic signal transduction pathway, but rather various receptors are activated, and result in the loss of cell membrane integrity and an uncontrolled release of products of cell death into the extracellular space. This initiates in the surrounding tissue an inflammatory response which attracts leukocytes and nearby phagocytes which eliminate the dead cells by phagocytosis. However, microbial damaging substances released by leukocytes would create collateral damage to surrounding tissues. This excess collateral damage inhibits the healing process. Thus, Untreated necrosis results in a buildup of decomposing dead tissue and cell debris at or near the site of the cell death. A classic example is gangrene. For this reason, it is often necessary to remove necrotic tissue surgically, a procedure known as debridement. Structural signs that indicate irreversible cell injury and the progression of necrosis include dense clumping and progressive disruption of genetic material, and disruption to membranes of cells and organelles. There are six distinctive morphological patterns of necrosis. Necrosis may occur due to external or internal factors. External factors may involve mechanical trauma damage to blood vessels, and ischemia. Thermal effects can result in necrosis due to the disruption of cells. In frostbite, crystals form, increasing the pressure of remaining tissue and fluid causing the cells to burst. Under extreme conditions tissues and cells die through an unregulated process of destruction of membranes and cytosol. Internal factors causing necrosis include, trophoneurotic disorders, injury and paralysis of nerve cells. Pancreatic enzymes are the major cause of fat necrosis. Necrosis can be activated by components of the immune system, such as the complement system, bacterial toxins, activated natural killer cells, and peritoneal macrophages. Pathogen-induced necrosis programs in cells with immunological barriers may alleviate invasion of pathogens through surfaces affected by inflammation. Toxins and pathogens may cause necrosis. Toxins such as snake venoms may inhibit enzymes and cause cell death. Necrotic wounds have also resulted from the stings of Vespa mandarinia. Pathological conditions are characterized by inadequate secretion of cytokines. Nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species are also accompanied by intense necrotic death of cells. A classic example of a necrotic condition is ischemia which leads to a drastic depletion of oxygen, glucose, and other trophic factors and induces massive necrotic death of endothelial cells and non-proliferating cells of surrounding tissues. Recent cytological data indicates that necrotic death occurs not only during pathological events but it is also a component of some physiological process. 
Activation induced death of primary T lymphocytes and other important constituents of the immune response are caspase independent and necrotic by morphology, hence, Current researchers have demonstrated that the occurrence of necrotic cell death can not only occur during pathological processes but also during normal processes such as tissue renewal, embryogenesis, and immune response. Until recently, necrosis was thought to be an unregulated process. There are two broad pathways in which necrosis may occur in an organism. The first of these two pathways initially involves oncosis, where swelling of the cells occur. The cell then proceeds to blebbing, and this is followed by pycnosis, in which nuclear shrinkage transpires. In the final step of this pathway the nucleus is dissolved into the cytoplasm, which is referred to as karyolysis. The second pathway is a secondary form of necrosis that is shown to occur after apoptosis and budding. Cellular changes of necrosis occur in this secondary form of apoptosis, where the nucleus breaks into fragments, which is known as karyorexis. The nucleus changes in necrosis, and characteristics of this change are determined by manner in which its DNA breaks down. Plasma alterations are also seen in necrosis. Plasma membranes appear discontinuous when viewed with an electron microscope. This discontinuous membrane is caused by cell blebbing and the loss of microvilli. There are many causes of necrosis, and as such treatment is based upon how the necrosis came about. Treatment of necrosis typically involves two distinct processes. Usually, the underlying cause of the necrosis must be treated before the dead tissue itself can be dealt with. Even after the initial cause of the necrosis has been halted, the necrotic tissue will remain in the body. The body's immune response to apoptosis, which involves the automatic breaking down and recycling of cellular material, is not triggered by necrotic cell death due to the apoptotic pathway being disabled. If calcium is deficient, pectin cannot be synthesized, and therefore the cell walls cannot be bonded and thus an impediment of the meristems. This will lead to necrosis of stem and root tips and leaf edges. For example, Necrosis of tissue can occur in Arabidopsis thaliana due to plant pathogens. Karyolysis, the chromatin of the nucleus fades due to the loss of the DNA by degradation. Pycnosis, the nucleus shrinks and the chromatin condenses. Karyorexis, the shrunken nucleus fragments to complete dispersal. Debridement referring to the removal of dead tissue by surgical or non-surgical means, is the standard therapy for necrosis. Depending on the severity of the necrosis, this may range from removal of small patches of skin to complete amputation of affected limbs or organs. Chemical removal of necrotic tissue is another option in which enzymatic debriding agents, categorized as proteolytic, fibrinolytic or collagenases, are used to target the various components of dead tissue. In select cases, special maggot therapy using Lucilia sericata larvae has been employed to remove necrotic tissue and infection, in the case of ischemia, which includes myocardial infarction, the restriction of blood supply to tissues causes hypoxia and the creation of reactive oxygen species that react with, and damage proteins and membranes. Antioxidant treatments can be applied to scavenge the ROS, wounds caused by physical agents, including physical trauma and chemical burns, can be treated with antibiotics and anti-inflammatory drugs to prevent bacterial infection and inflammation. Keeping the wound clean from infection also prevents necrosis. Chemical and toxic agents react with the skin leading to skin loss and eventually necrosis.
Treatment involves identification and discontinuation of the harmful agent, followed by treatment of the wound, including prevention of infection and possibly the use of immunosuppressive therapies such as anti-inflammatory drugs or immunosuppressants. In the example of a snake bite, the use of antivenom halts the spread of toxins whilst receiving antibiotics to impede infection.